Forty miles across Lake Okeechobee and through the Okeechobee Waterway, we arrived at the Glades Boat Storage in between the towns of Moorhaven and LaBelle, Florida. We were ready to have Gone with the Wind finally hauled out of the water. We chose Glades Boat Storage instead of the closer Indian Town Marina for two reasons. One, our interactions with Indian Town weren't really pleasant. And two, you guessed it, the price difference. Glades Boat Storage is practically half the price of Indian Town Marina. We suspected it had been at least five years since Gwen's bottom side had seen the sun. We had the yard pressure wash the bottom before she was taken away in the lift and moved to her new temporary home on the hard. Surprisingly, there was very little growth. You never guessed that it had been at least a year since we had the hull last scraped and five years since she was last hauled out. After Sean scraped and sanded the bottom, he discovered a shoddy keel repair. He removed the poor patch job so he could repair it properly. He started with a layer of epoxy resin and followed by building up the crevice with three rounds of high density West System 404. That looks like some blisters. Real small. There's only a few that are kind of going past the gel coat. And what I've done, just sanded these down, cleaned them up, and I got I got some epoxy on there cooking. So as soon as it gets a little tacky, I'm gonna fair this out, and then finish sanding the rest. I got it all scraped up. Let's see. Not too bad for. 1972. While the resin dried on Gwen's port side, he prepped the starboard side hull for primer and top coat. Alternating jobs and sides of the boat allowed each area time to dry without any real downtime in between the work. We used the same Rust-Oleum Marine Primer and Topside paint for the area above the waterline on the hull that we used on the deck and cabins. Sean preferred to use a 4-inch roller because he felt that he had more control of the amount of pressure he used to spread the paint. This is not fun. This is scary. Don't put so much paint. Uh, I don't like looking over the edge. Not in the land, anyways. Cool in the water. That's my yard dog right there. Yard dog. Huh voodoo. Huh voo. Hey boy. That's my worker bee right there. Worker bee. 
Woji, Woji. And that's my little chunky monkey. Oh, Mojo. You're the cutest. <laughs> Back to work, worker bee. Back to work. Move my stick. Ghetto board. First coat of topside is complete. Sean is knocking this out. Yesterday he primed everything. Today he'll have it completely painted. We're gonna get out of here pretty quickly. We chose an affordable ablative anti-foul paint for below the waterline. Our first layer was blue with the top layer black. We used different colors so we could easily identify when the paint eroded down to the first blue layer again signaling time to plan the next haul out. I got the shaft cleaned up with some some emery cloth already. It's good. It's always a good idea when you're on the hard. Pull off your prop, anti-seize, clean it up. This thing had barnacles all over it. I already got them scraped off. Now I'm going to use this wheel. back to the bronze, then hit it with some memory cloth, clean it up, treat it. That looks a lot better. Good job, Sean. There's the prop, all cleaned up. Now it's time to color. gonna have one colorful cup. <laughs> there we go, there's our experimental colored prop. We got it colored on all sides. And then black in the center. We're gonna see whenever it's later time to do some scraping underneath, see what the prop looks like, and see if any of the colors actually resist growth, as we've been told. Living on the boat, on the hard, with the dogs, was definitely more complicated than living at the marina. This boatyard doesn't contain potable water, so we got our first practice with water management aboard Gwen, and we were happy we arrived with full water tanks. While you have access to electricity, it's by means of a power box with 110 volt outlets and not the standard marine plug-in that we were used to running all of our power needs with at the marina. But the biggest challenge for us became getting on and off the boat with the dogs. This is only slightly intimidating to climb up to get into the boat every time I want to get in or out of the boat. Fortunately, our boat neighbor, who was only there on the weekends, let us borrow his stairs so that we could haul Voodoo up and down whenever we needed.
During a few bad weather days, when Chum was forced to stop painting, we took the time to inspect all the through holes. We were pleased to find them in excellent condition, although Sean did find two valves in the head that weren't opening, and replaced them both. Voodoo! Don't fall in the bushes. But he fell in the bushes. <laughs> come. Voodoo, I said come. Good boy. It. He had the little one in first, but I prefer it like this. Good? Yep. Okay, reverse. Okay, slow down. Just barely give it any throttle. A little bit of throttle. Okay, right there. One of the last projects we completed was the installation of brackets for a future swim platform. We just happened to get the brackets from this salvaged Gulf Star 36. I thought drilling into the deck was stressful until it was time to drill below the waterline. Although I'm happy it's done and I will enjoy our future swim platform, the anxiety and fear associated with drilling below a boat's waterline and doubting you used enough 5200 to seal the holes you just willingly put in your boat days before you can launch back into the water and verify there are no leaks yeah, yeah. was almost more than I could handle. Alright, 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 I'm done. Hey, this job was not fun. Um, 
Sorry, baby, I caught a silicone dope in your But the swim step brackets are secure. <laughs> and somehow I have to get myself out of this hole <laughs> that I climbed into without falling into the other holes. Ugh. Whoa. Let it all here. Okay. Whew. All right, take that glove off and take a break. We spent a total of 12 days at the boatyard, which was four days longer than Sean planned. But that was due to bad weather and running around to find random hardware. We are proud to have successfully completed our first haul out ever on Gone with the Wind. Now it's time to get back to Pahokee to finish up the last of our projects. There's our spot, all empty. Not time to collect the dogs. There they are. Thanks for watching Big Easy Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to continue watching future videos. As always, a special thanks goes out to our crew members, since our patrons keep these videos coming. You can always stay current with our activities by following us on Instagram and Facebook, too. Thanks, y'all. Pinwheel, pinwheel, spinning around. Looked at my pinwheel and see what I found. Pinwheel, pinwheel, that's all I know. <laughs> all right.